Hello everyone, I am Dr. Narayanan, Dermatology Registrar from London, Northwick. I am here today to give an overview of different types of rashes associated with acute medical problems or a dermatological background. I have grouped them as according to associated symptoms which could prioritize some of the rashes more severe and more important than others. The first group I would like to talk about is rashes with fever. Most common rashes in adults with fever and of an infective and urgent nature is the purpuric and petechial rashes which we see in the meningococcal infections and needs immediate attention. Then also we come across the blistering rashes of Stephen Johnson syndrome, a very rare drug reaction but can prove fatal. Then comes the viral infections, most spread over childhood and also spans into the adults. Also not to mention the bullous rashes, autoimmune type of dermatological diseases. And again, the infective causes, the cellulitis, day-to-day -day cellulitis we face, as, as well as the necrotizing fasciitis, which is a rare, very rapidly progressive infection. When you come to the drug reactions, we come across the main one, the erythema multiforme, or the Stephen Johnson syndrome, which are both similar, which involve 10% of the body surface, but however, the etiology of both can be quite different. Erythema multiforme is most often have an infective etiology, more with uh, mycoplasma or HSV, whereas Stephen Johnson is almost always drug-related in adults, most common being allopurinol, anticonvulsants, sulfonamides, and uh, nevirapine, the antiretroviral. There could be some risk factors in these patients which predose for some more than the others, especially a past herpes infection or a HIV infection or a weakened immune system with lupus or recent chemotherapy and also of specific HLA belonging to specific HLA types B1502 or 1508 which is associated with carbamazepine or allopurinol respectively. Also, a family history of Stephen Johnson's predisposes the other family members to similar situation. Stephen Johnson's has blistering lesions commonly seen in the skin, mouth and eyes, mucosal areas. So the criteria required is it presents 93% of the times with mucosal lesions, 78% with eye, lesions, eye symptoms and 63% with genital lesions as well and the rashes can be pronounced in palms and soles too. It initially presents with the prodromal symptoms which later proceeds to these mucosal blistering ulcerative lesions which gradually end up in denuding of skin with skin loss which can increase up to 30% which results in a fatal condition called toxic epidermal necrolysis. The clinical signs you can elicit is an Nikolsky sky which what happens is when you can apply some lateral pressure to the skin, the blisters can be widened. This may be positive in a femme figures too. Having recognized the serious condition, most important thing to do is to move the patients to ICU as early as possible. Even when you identify about less than 10% of skin loss and even when you suspect a Steven Johnson syndrome. Initially a score called score 10 is done which predicts the prognosis and mortality in these patients. A score of 2 gives a mortality of about 12% which is dependent on a heart rate, age and the percentage of epidermal detachment and serum urea and glucose and bicarbonate levels. In the ICU, it is managed by a multidisciplinary team essentially consisting of plastic surgeons, ophthalmologists and dermatologists. The main management is supportive with nutritional, maintaining oral hygiene and identifying and treating sepsis earlier and also instituting certain systemic treatments if the patient is not improving. However, none of these is evidenced so far, but various different combinations of these medicines are used in most of these patients. Then comes the most common maculopapular rashes, which is generalized and we see quite common in the emergency departments. This is most commonly stems from using medications in the last week to the last month or so, most common being penicillin, sulfa, again anticonvulsants or allopurinol. The patients present with acute erythematous rashes 
covering mostly trunk extremities all over, feeling quite uncomfortable with inflamed skin, also can result in further mucosal lesions or can spread systemically causing vasculitis involving the organs that essentially kidneys. Then another type of generalized rash as you can see is a tricarial rash which can be again a drug induced and part of it can be an part of an anaphylaxis to the drugs as well which is an immediate emergency needed to be dealt with with urgent resuscitation. Coming to looking at the drug reactions how they can present in various different ways it's good to have an overview. Any localized form of drug reactions can be due to a contact dermatitis which is topical and again due to some fixed drug eruptions which occur in the same place due to hypersensitivity drug reactions. Then comes the generalized macular rash which you just saw. And there are also systemic drug reactions. One of it is called the DRESS drug reactions with eosinophilia and systemic involvement and also vasculitis occurring due to drugs. Then you just saw the life-threatening drug reactions which is from anaphylaxis and Steven Johnson syndrome. The main criteria to identify a drug reaction is to get a detailed drug history with a timeline of the medications when they were started and the start of the rashes. This would give an indication of the time frame as well as an association to the culprit drug. The main stay of treatment would be beginning with a ladder of topical steroids, emollients, antihistamines, moving up to oral steroids if the symptoms are moderate to severe. Sometimes, if clinically not correlating as a typical drug rash, a biopsy may be necessary. Then comes the biggest group of dermatological blistering disorders, which often present as emergencies. The most common seen are the two types of blistering reactions, which you see, femficus vulgaris, which is superficial intraepidermal blisters, which results in extensive raw areas excoriated because the blisters are quite superficial and they get traumatized easily and we are not able to see them when we first examine them. All we see is raw, raw open areas which coalesce together and cause discomfort and itching to the patient. Second type is a subepidermal blister similar which is called the bullous pemphigoid. Both of these are autoimmune in nature with antibodies directed against the basement membrane and the intraepidermal desmosomes of the skin. Again, immediate management would be systemic steroids, topical steroids, emollients and uh, later on moving to immunosuppressive medications to maintain the immune reaction down. Any exposed skin or inflamed denuded skin needs baseline supportive treatment which includes hourly emollients with paraffin based white soft paraffin, liquid soft paraffin and also looking at antiseptic skin wash and using dressings like Mepitel Exudry so that the exudate is not sticking to the bed covers and causing more damage to the epidermis. Again, the emollients to be used belongs as an ointment based ones in the night time and a cream based ones for the daytime. If there is intractable itching causing additional epidermal damage, it's good to break this itch scratch cycle with generous emollients, antihistamines and occlusion in areas recommended and also some behavioral techniques. Then comes the red man syndrome, it's called erythroderma, who presents with a full red skin. This condition is we see when there is 85% of the skin is inflamed, it, it's mostly based on dermatological skin diseases which flare up all of a sudden. Most common being eczema, psoriasis and sometimes cutaneous lymphomas most often diagnosed for the first time. There is also a differential diagnosis with this which is called pitreasis rubra pilaris which is a follicular type of skin rashes. Differentiation being it has some spare areas which is not involved. The most important sign here is to examine the lymph nodes which would direct a clue towards diagnosing the cutaneous lymphoma. Then comes the itchy rashes. Most common itchy rashes, we as we all know, scabies. Good not to miss it and give a always worth a trial of an anti scabetic medication if science indicates so, or sometimes atypical types which we see in Norwegian scabies of immunosuppressed people. Second comes the insect bite atricarias. And again, there can be drug-induced rashes which can be itchy and the 
particular type of discoid eczema, which is very itchy, which has an infective trigger and has to be managed with antibiotics and emollients. And not to mention the contact dermatitis, irritant dermatitis, which can be itchy. Another common itchy dermatitis associated with medical condition is associated with chronic kidney disease, especially patients who are on dialysis. This is called chronic perforating collagenosis, which presents as nodules in the skin. And this is more common patients who had MRI contracts, gadolinium contracts, and they seem to present with chronic perforating collagenosis. Again, neurodermatitis is one of the causes with intractable itching. Any rashes, it's good to have a close examination and to observe for any scaly rashes. This separates them into a distinct type of rashes, distinct type of dermatological diseases, which can be psoriasis, mostly of different types of gut or the flap psoriasis. Again, can be a discoid eczema, which is quite hyperkeratotic, and uh, it can differentiate a fungal dermatosis, a different type of peripheral scales, and uh, pityriasis rosacea, in which you, you see a mother patch or a herald patch in the beginning, followed by Christmas tree pattern like rashes, which are very itchy. There are other rashes that can happen which are scaly too, the lichenoid drug eruptions, lichen planus, and uh, annular erythemas from paraneoplastic origin. Then comes itching only with no rashes. What do we do? Uh -huh. We need to look at the skin closely and the background medical issues which can give rise to systemic causes for the pruritus. The first thing you see is elderly population with cirrhosis, which is dry skin and also metabolic problems like chronic skin disease, chronic kidney disease, iron overload or deficiency, iron overload being hemochromatosis and iron deficiencies and also cholestasis from liver problems. And comes the endocrine problems with diabetes, thyroid disorders and the hematological issues of polycythemia, Hodgkin's lymphoma and cutaneous lymphoma too. And the metastatic solid tumors can also give rise to pruritus, especially from breast colon or thymomas and cholangiocarcinoma. The main management would be to look for the cause and again treat the skin with emollients, antihistamines and to run a screening blood test which is the, which we call it the pruritus screen which looks at for any of the which can give a clue to and pick up any causes from that. And the patient can be returned to the GP for follow-up and advised to be referred to dermatology at a later stage. Last but not least is the painful blistering rashes, the most common being the herpes zoster, which is dermatomal. Sometimes it can be disseminated in more than one dermatome when the patient has uh, post-malignancy or the patient is immunocompromised from HIV or other malignancies. Then it comes the genital herpes, which is also painful, it can be primary or recurrent and again cellulitis with blisters. Of note in this is the necrotizing fasciitis, which is very very painful and rapidly progressing. The infection can go deep into the fascia and results in tissue loss and necrosis and further cause organ failures like renal failure and, and cause septicemia. It's very important to identify this condition early and again admit an ICU with supplementary supportive care with oxygen, fluids and choose appropriate antibiotic after identifying the organisms and send for immediate surgical management. There is a 25% mortality with organ involvement and septicemia in this condition. Last but not least is to mention about the COVID-19 and the skin conditions comes with that. As you know, like any viral infections, COVID can present with erythematous rashes and atricalia rashes which are generalized and are more present on the trunk. But some specific rashes have been identified in Thailand, Italy and Spain where they had the highest number of COVID. Especially in children, they found chickenpox like rashes in the feet and they also found bruise like rashes in the toes and petechial rashes and libido type of rashes as well. So when you do not have enough COVID testing, look at the skin, it could be a clue because these rashes often appear in the initial presentation. If, if in doubt, seek dermatology help. Dermnet, which is a very useful site for dermatological diagnosis. Thank you very much.